gonna shake heaven, join in together, this is how we do it, we're taking back the music. What's up y'all, it's your man Montel Jordan in the building, coming in live from Atlanta, Georgia, and right now you got it locked on the G-Time TV, you dig? Nu gaan we kijken naar een interview van Filemon dat hij onlangs gehad heeft met Montel Jordan. So, Montel, finally. Yeah, I'm, man. I'm really glad that you, you could make it and you could make take the time out just to talk to me. Yes, sir. I'm glad to be able to be here and for us to make this happen today, man. Yeah. So, um, Montel, um, can you describe yourself as a person? Um, as a person, uh, I am a 42-year-old, uh, gorgeous black man with a wife, a beautiful wife, uh, three kids, and uh, I, I love Jesus. Right. And uh, basically, from that standpoint, that is me in a nutshell. I have had an incredible journey and had an incredible testimony of life and how music has allowed me to go throughout all the world. Uh, but as far as me and who Montel is, I'm just a, a guy who's a, a husband and a father uh, and a guy who's just uh, here to serve and tell as many people about, uh, about Christ as I possibly can before I leave here. How would you describe yourself like a characteristic? I would say I am I am intense. I would say I'm honest. Uh, I would say I am a say what you mean and mean what you say mm. type of guy. Mm. Um, I'm a word guy. Words mean a lot to me, mm. uh, meaning uh, I place value on what a person's word is. Mm. I like to carry around the, a God place energy in me mm. that when I walk into a room, I like to change a room. When I'm around some of my friends, you know, my old friends from back in the day, yeah. um, they don't talk around me like they used to talk. <laughs> Or the people that cuss. They're not like <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, it's more like, You know, uh, you know, hold on, don't say that, you know, because, you know, so-and-so's in the room. What it is is that I think the God in me makes people uncomfortable if you're not uh, uh, in touch with that, with God like that. How would you describe yourself as an artist now? I don't look at me as an artist. I look now as somebody who is leading people uh, in worship and leading up uh, other worship leaders in how to lead people Uh, in worship. God is the artist and he's just kind of using me right now mm -hmm. to develop uh, leaders. How, how did you go from, from this is how we do it and get it on tonight mm -hmm. to um, following God now and being a worship pastor? The process of uh, transitioning uh, from this is how we do it and, and get it on tonight um, Those were things that I believe God allowed me to go through so that I could have a testimony. God sometimes has to raise up people who've been through something, who have a testimony, uh, to be able to take the journey like the one I'm taking right now. I had one of the biggest songs in the world, not just in the United States of America. This is how we do it. It was one of the biggest songs in the world. Get It On Tonight was a number one record. Let's Ride was a number one record. All of those records in the world and by the world standards Uh, supposedly showed uh, a success. Um, I think those songs right now, what they show, and, and to me, my life, um, I think is a confirmation that you can have everything in the world, uh, right? And if you don't have God, then you basically have nothing. Uh, but if you have nothing in this world, but if you have God, you have everything. your past. Yes, um, sir. Were you a real Christian or not in your own eyes? Um, <laughs> back then, uh, I would have said that I was, um, but now looking, looking back on it, um, I think a Christian, the definition of Christian is a follower of Christ. 
um, I think there's a difference between being a follower and being a believer. Mm. So now what happens is as I look back at my life, I realized that I knew Jesus. Um, I believed in Jesus. Mm. Um, I believe a lot of people believe in Jesus, yeah. but they don't necessarily follow him. I know what you because, mean. Because in order to follow him, uh, it's, it's, it's like this. I have an eight-year-old son. And when my son follows me, it means when I go places, he goes where I go. Um, he does not go other places and I'm one place and he's another place because then he's not following me. Yeah. Um, when I walk, because he's my son, uh, he walks like I walk. And and let me give you this, is when, when I eat my food, I measure my food. In other words, if I have three things on my plate, when I get to the end of that, uh, I'm finishing all three things at the same time. Uh, my son, he doesn't like to eat like that, but because he wants to be like me, he'll try and do what he sees his daddy do, you know? So in those ways, the way I walk, the way I talk, the way I say things, the way I joke, my mannerisms, my son, because he's following me, becomes more like me. Yeah. So to answer your question more thoroughly, um, I was a believer, um, but I did not follow Christ. So to say, was I a Christian? Uh, I would have said I, I would look back now and say I was a believer, but I was not following Christ in a way that I would take his name on and say, yes, I'm a Christian to take his name and actually wear his name because my actions did not reflect my father. I heard in the whole process that, that your wife or I read it, that your wife got a prophecy from God. Um, that, that, that um, and you were busy with an R&B album just uh, uh, in the year before you, you became the worship pastor. Mm -hmm. um, so how did that go and when did she she um, choose to tell you about it? Uh, she didn't. She uh, this is this is actually what happened in 2009. Uh, I was creating what I thought was the hottest album of my career. It was going to be my comeback album, you know. Um, There was a resurgence of, of 90s artists coming back and getting television shows and reality shows. And so I was like, well, you know, if I got this, you know, great, crazy hot album and, and I get a television show called My Television, I could probably get out there and I could be back in the grind again, too, you know? And um, in, uh, that was 2009. And right at January 2010, uh, we went on a 21 day fast with our church. And during that time, God spoke to my wife and told her, Um, we're going to be retiring from the business. Her hearing this and hearing my excitement about this new album and TV show and how I'm getting ready to blow up again and try and stay relevant and everything, God is telling her one thing, but she's hearing me say something else. So um, she did not tell me. She was, she was very smart and she didn't tell me what God told her. She basically went to God and said, God, if you want him to do this, you're going to have to tell him. So for the next six months, she helped me spin my wheels of trying to get record deals and try and get meetings and try and get investors. Uh, and every door that was open got shut. I mean, I sat down with Akon. I sat down with a bunch of people who heard my album and who loved my album. And I could not get a deal, couldn't get a distribution deal. Like nobody would move on this project. And I was sitting back like, I don't understand this guy. I got the TV show, I done shot a pilot. I got the album, I got everything laid out you know, for this, you know, what is up with this? And so in July of 2010, six months after, uh, after my wife heard that word from God, um, we went on another 21 day fast, but this time it was not corporate with Victory World Church. It was just she and I, we got together and we fasted together. And as I was praying to God, asking him what is going on with my career, my life, this or that or the other, um, I felt him say to me in my spirit, and when I say that, I don't mean like a voice came out of heaven and said, Montel, you must retire. It wasn't like that, you know, but what it was is in my spirit as I was praying and I was hungering and let the food go so I could hunger for him and ask him, God, what is going on? You know, speak to me. And I could hear in my spirit him saying, you're hungering after something that's not going to satisfy you. So you decide to lay that down and give me what I've wanted in your life and from your life from the time you were a child, none of this is going to happen for you. 
And it was as simple as that. I knew what that meant. I could have walked away from that and been like, nah, that was just, I'm hungry, you know, but it wasn't that. I knew in my spirit that God was saying to me, you've tried it your own way for long enough. And now it's time for you to let me, uh, uh, to let me have the, let, let me drive now. And so that was when I heard from God and him tell me that I was going to have to lay that life down. 